Do you want to get well? That's the question we look at today. That's the question Jesus asked someone today. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. Welcome to Branch Together. Today we're reading John chapter 5. Before we dive in, I invite you to pray with me. Father, I thank you for this day. Many people, many of us, either ourselves or people we love, are not well today. Many people want to get well and don't know what to do. Lord, help us get well. We see these stories and they're hard to believe because we don't see the same things around us today. But help us get well. For those who are hurting, for those who are struggling, I pray that you would bring your healing. Um, we see in this story too that more than even getting physically well is getting well inside. Uh, we're sin, we're evil, we're missing the mark on life corrupts us and makes us no, no good in many ways and hurts us. Help us get well internally and externally. Help us learn more today. Help us take a step closer to who you made us to be today. In your name we pray. Amen.
during a Jewish festival, so something like during a Christmas season or a Thanksgiving when everyone is home, you know, when there's this big party going on, during this whole thing in, Jeru in the Jerusalem area, they all just assemble and party down Jerusalem. During this, Jesus meets a man who has been lame for 38 years. And he's at this place that supposedly has some type of supernatural healing powers, the Bethesda pool. Many sick, wounded, and paralyzed people gathered. Jesus goes up to one of them, which I always find is fascinating. He, we see like Jesus meeting one person. There's just hundreds and hundreds of people that have different ailments all around them. And Jesus goes up to one of them and says, do you want to get well? Which I always feel like is a bit offensive. <laughs> like, obviously I do, right? That's why I'm here. But the man has an excuse. He says, I'm not well, and I need someone to help me get to the place that can make me well. Right? So he's sitting there saying, kind of implied, of course I want to be well, but there's no one who can get me to the place where I can be made well. And Jesus, the word, we remember John 1 in the beginning, the word speaks, just like the voice that was speaking at creation. This voice speaks and says, get up, take up your mat, and walk. And instantly, the man gets up and walks. A miracle has taken place. How can this happen? How can we believe this? People can't do that. If we're following John's logic, though, Jesus is the voice that called all things into existence. So that same voice, that same word, is here in front of this man and says, get up. He's just continuing to form his creation. He is continuing to subdue the chaos and to bring forth order and life and goodness. Now, the healing happens to be on a Sabbath, and it's illegal in their Jewish laws to pick up your mat and walk on the Sabbath for some reason. So some of the religious folks see this man walking, and the response isn't, it's a miracle that you are walking. The response is, hey, you're doing something wrong. Um, Talk about missing the forest for the trees. And we, we all do this, right? This is what we do as people all the time. Um, it's, it's great that this is happening to you, but I notice that you're doing this little thing wrong. Um, some of us, if we're critical people, I tend to be critical. Um, even if we're trying to think we're helping people, someone will do something that's on the whole really, really good or something will happen for someone really, really good. And instead of celebrating that and rejoicing in that, we point out the thing that went wrong or we point out the thing that could have gone better. And um, so these religious people are up in arms. Like, what are you, you're breaking the law. But like, yeah, but I, I couldn't walk for 38 years. Now I can walk. So I, I just did what the person who helped me walk told me to do. And anyway, so they're upset, they're frustrated. Now, this story ends with Jesus finding the man again. And this is really important. He says, I see that you are well. See that you don't sin so that something worse happens. So Jesus has healed this man. This man probably thinks the worst thing that's happened to him has been this physical ailment he's suffered with for 38 years, which makes complete sense. That's how I'd feel. But Jesus points this man, he's, he points us to something really important, to sin, to live a destructive life, to, to work towards evil and not good, to refuse the good you are meant to do. All of that is sin, and all of that is worse than living with severe physical ailments and difficulties. Jesus makes that abundantly clear. He'll make that super clear in John. Now, go read his Sermon on the Mount. He said he would rather you lose an eye or a hand than you use those eyes and hands to sin. It'd be better to lose those body parts than to use them for evil in this world. Now, why? How is that true, right? Now, we don't, or I don't think that way, right? I, 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 I don't. I, I don't live that way. Um, and here's, here's what I think Jesus is getting at. Uh, sin, to do evil, it makes us less than human. And, and please listen, because here is what I mean by sin. 
to, to live with hatred, to live a selfish life, to live a life that isn't committed to the good of others is to miss out on what it means to be truly human. I think it misses out on what it means to be made in the image of God. It misses out on what it means to be holy and it's destructive and harmful and the worst thing that can happen to you. Um, and, and this is what I think Jesus believes. I, I don't think suffering is the worst thing that can happen to us. I think our participation in the evil of this world is the worst thing that can happen to us. Think about the effects of evil in your life and on every human life. The evil done to you, and if you are willing to be honest with yourself, the things that you do to others that bring harm. Harmful words, harmful intentions, harmful actions, envy, jealousy, spitefulness, pride, anger, and then murder and deceit and hatred. It all wrecks people. It wrecks you when you uh, do these things. It wrecks you when these things are done to them, when you receive them from the hand of the other. It's so bad. Um, Sin is so bad for us. Like evil and, and hurting one another is so bad for us that Jesus, the Son of God, the one who made people in the image of God, knows that we are meant for more than that. He knows that we are meant to live for so much more. We're meant to love the way that Jesus shows us to love, which we'll see later in John. Jesus will bow down and wash his friends' feet, and then he will surrender his life for them. He will love in a way where he empties himself for those he loves. And I believe and I think that that is the message of the New Testament, that self-giving and sacrificing love for others is what it means to be human. And it is living in that way that transforms and heals the world. And all of this sin keeps us from our destiny, from our rebirth, from our healing, and from our eternal life. And that's why Jesus heals someone and says, wait, stay away from sin, stay away from evil, lest something worse happens to you. God made you for good. I hope you see that and I hope you understand that today. God's hope for you is to be a part of his kingdom, to be a part of his life, to be reborn, to be transformed. And when we turn towards evil in thought, in word, in deed, we destroy the good we are made for. We destroy the good others are made for. We reject what it means to be made in his image. All right, that's John 3. That was John 5. <laughs> Tomorrow, we'll dive into John 6. Uh, thanks for listening. As always, as always, share your thoughts, your comments, your ideas. God bless, and we hope you have a great day, and we'll see you next time on Branch Today. Bye.